Zing 96 playing the songs you can feel. A bit like Dan Rickard from the Night Watchers Paranormal Australia group. Dan's representing him and Pete at the moment, and he joins me from his base somewhere in the Antarctic. Well, not really. He's just down the road. Hey, mate. <laughs> hey, Bill. How are you going? I'm all right. Can you feel it? I tell you, mate, the feelings in the air. We're not even near Halloween, mate, but uh, spirits are plenty. You guys are finding tons around your area. You've done the Atlantic Hotel um, in town. You've been out to the Dickerburn Bridge in Miver. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago with um, uh, the dude supposedly buried in the, the pylon out there. Uh, how those investigations turned out? Well, very interesting, actually. Uh, we went out and done the uh, Dicker uh, Brand Bridge first and um, had some very uh, interesting things happening there. I'm in the middle of editing that video at the moment and the amount of uh, intelligent responses that I've received and disembodied voices is phenomenal. Yeah. What, um, do, you, what do you think, that? Do you think it's workers on the bridge who've passed on? Well, the story goes, now there's a couple of stories now. There's definitely the main story of the gentleman that was the worker there that's... Um, he accidentally fell into one of the pylons while they were pouring the concrete because they used to pour the concrete by hand using wheelbarrow. Yeah. And his, his workmates didn't know that he'd fallen in and they just kept pouring it in on top of him. So apparently he's still encased inside one of those um, uh, tiers, one of those pylons. And um, the other one is that there's two children that have passed away there. So um, they were um, drowned, they drowned in the river. Right, okay, when it did come up. Have you clearly identified the worker who's in the pylon? Uh, no, at the moment I'm calling him old mate <laughs> because there's, there's no information anywhere that I can find and if anybody does know, please get in touch. But, yeah, it's uh, anecdotal evidence. I mean, we keep hearing from historians, Mel and Daryl Dodd did their uh, gold nugget, uh, nostalgic nuggets on their YouTube page and they went out there to have a look at it but they were feeling a bit of a vibe but you've actually got, and you'll see this video soon, you've actually got some, some interaction out there. Yeah, definitely so. Um, it's actually Queensland's oldest, uh, running bridge that's still operating yeah. and um, yeah a lot of activity uh, we had uh, knocks when we we're asking for them we've had um, we had disembodied voices we had uh, reactions and uh, responses coming through our our um, uh, spirit box um, we also had uh, yeah just a lot of activity that you'll see in the in the video that's yeah, coming out yeah. within the next week now the Atlantic Hotel I'm not familiar with this pub in town where where's that Okay, that's on the uh, that's in Gympie. Now it's actually in the on the corner of uh, Mary Street and um, oh the the other one. Oh, I can't think of it now. Um, anyway, it's in town there. It's actually um, Charlie's took it over and then they moved Charlie's to another premises. Ah, oh, so, right. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah, the other street name escapes me at the moment. I cannot think of it, but it's on the corner of Mary Street and this other one. Yeah, um, I know. I know where you are, mate. I'm trying to think of the name myself. So <laughs> yeah. So. What uh, occurred there? Is it just, you know, your run-of-the-mill type interactions or is something <clears throat> anything dastardly go on there? Well, now, that's the thing, too, is it's, it was pretty difficult to find online uh, some history of the place. Now, the gentleman that let us in there, Paul, he's the key holder. Um, he told us that uh, he knows of one particular instance that happened that uh, when he was... He actually lived there at one stage many yeah. years ago, and there was a gentleman that um, unfortunately took his own life while he was there. Right. And... Um, so we tried to get in touch with the, with this gentleman, and um, we actually we actually had a lot of interaction and intelligent responses and, and communication as yeah. well. Now, so, when you when now for people who are new to this, what does it mean by an intelligent response? Okay, so we just don't ask questions that uh, you know anything could just. Okay, so some of the some of the um, equipment that we use um, is like it sweeps radio frequencies now. Sometimes you might get a radio station or something that it goes past, but yeah. it's going through that fast that it hasn't got a chance to actually say a sentence or anything. So we always ask questions that are related to the situation. So I'll start off by saying, how many of us are standing here right now? So that way I can get an intelligent response. So yeah. if, it says, if there's three of us there it'll, and it says three, then I know that, okay, that's an intelligent response. You know, if I say, um, where are we right now? And it says Atlantic or Atlantic Hotel, then I go, okay, that's an intelligent response. So yeah. not just any sort of, not any word that just comes out of it. It's got to be something that is the answer I'm looking for, the specific answer I'm okay. looking for. With me, Dan from the Night Watchers Paranormal Australia group who've uh, done a couple of investigations, Stickham and Bridge in Miver and the Atlantic Hotel in Gympie. Uh, now, they're going up when those videos, we've been talking about the Dickham and Bridge and the Atlantic Hotel ones, uh, an ETA for the visual on those on your page. Okay, yeah, the Dicker Brand Bridge one will probably go up by this weekend, I would say, if at the very latest, the start of next week. 
Okay. Um, just in the middle of editing that now, I'm about to, well, just over halfway through it. Yeah. So, yeah. And a lot of people, uh, and a lot of people notice there's uh, different paranormal night watches groups out there. They're not they're not takeoff sites. They're part of your group now, mate. You're just getting bigger. Yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, Pete and I started out with night watches paranormal Australia, but now we've got representative teams uh, throughout Australia and two international teams: one in Japan and one in um, Canada. Now the other teams are night watches paranormal. Perth, and then we've got other areas as well. So uh, Brisbane, yeah. So we've got about we've got about eight teams uh, in total, and uh, still growing. And Night Watchers Empire, amazing. Now, <laughs> I've just been coming through your uh, page there. I did see there. Pete's done a uh, investigation at a uh, brothel that I'm assuming is going to uh, team up with your Atlantic Hotel one. You're going to have a crossover episode, which is a first for you guys. Yeah, exactly right. We uh, we're just starting a new thing because Pete's now down in South Australia, living down there. So we. We've had a lot of uh, fans screaming out that were saying that they want to see videos with us two together. So I had the idea, I saw it on some TV shows where they do the whole crossover yeah. uh, between two different teams. The and DC thought, okay, Universe, we, yeah. Yeah, so we can do something like that. So what we've done is we've started this new uh, thing called the crossover series where it'll it'll be me doing my investigation, then it'll fly to him and then show him and it'll just go back and forth. Yeah. Between the two of us. I'm liking that. Now, before we go, you've got to jump on your page, Nightwatch's Paranormal Australia. There's a uh, figure that was seen on the side of a road in Landsborough. And yeah. explain what's happened here. This is You've had two independent sources on this particular ghost. Yes. Okay. So we had a follower reach out to us and she caught on her dash cam a lady standing on the side of the road. Now, where this road is, there's nothing there. It's just grass. Yes, there are homes there, but they're further back. Now, it just looks really weird. She's facing away from the road, and she's wearing this long white dress. Now, one of our followers is a very experienced seamstress. Now, she actually called me and told me that it does look like it's something that is from the 1800s era, not something from today. Now, this lady does cast a shadow. Now, I want to let everybody know real clearly that spirits can cast shadows. When they manifest, especially if they manifest fully, yep. they can cast a shadow. Now, you look at clouds. You can put your hand right through a cloud, but it still casts a shadow. Hey, good analogy, good comparison, because I always thought, yeah. you know, ghosts were wispy-type apparitions that were only being filtered through our mind. And have, mm. Actually, I thought ghosts were more in our mind than a <clears> solid <throat> substance that you can photo. But yet again, you photograph them, which really has astounded me. Well, uh, a perfect example is a friend of mine, he did security. Now, he actually went to, do a nurse, uh, to a nursing home as one of his stops. Now, he was actually talking to this elderly lady at the front for about two minutes or so, and then he went inside to find out uh, and found out that all the residents were in bed asleep. So he told the nurses that there was an old lady at the front in case they wanted to go you know, bring her in or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And um, they looked it up on CCTV, and there he is talking to nobody for about two minutes, just standing there talking to nobody. And wow. he, swore, he swore black and blue that he was standing there talking to a lady that was as solid as you and I. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. Mm. The Night Watchers Paranormal Australia group, there's all that vision up there. The Dickerman Bridge Atlantic Hotel about to go up very soon. Can't wait for those episodes, Dan. Mate, all power to you and Pete. The, the, the network just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and I'd assume people just jump on and subscribe and become members because you are open to some fantastic content that keeps keeps chilling me to the bone, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're 100% authentic. We don't, we don't fake or stage anything. That's why Pete and I got into this. We wanted to be one of the real guys that went out there and actually found the real evidence because there are a lot of YouTubers out there staging stuff for views. We do not do that. We want to make sure that we get it across that we are 100% real. If we do an investigation and we get nothing, that video will still go up because we want to show people that yeah. you don't always get stuff. It's not always tables flipping and doors banging, etc. you know. It's all real. It's incredible. Nightwatch is Paranormal Australia. I'll get the links up of their latest on our socials if you want to look at that. But Dan and Pete, thank you for joining us here at Zinc. <laughs> 